Photosynthetic carbon capture by trees is one of the most effective strategies that we have to draw down carbon from the atmosphere in the fight against climate change. Here we try to assess the global restoration potential of the planet in terms of trees. We try to do that in order to see like how much by using tree restoration we can address climate change. Is it something realistic to use trees to fight climate change? Can we do a lot? Can we do a few? Can we do nothing? This is what we want to know. We're using a methodology called photo interpretation, which is essentially people zooming in on Google Earth using a standardized methodology and a standardized approach to characterize tree canopy cover in thousands of locations across the world. For the photo interpretation, uh, we basically managed to identify the tree cover on more than 78,000 points. 78,000 little square of one hectare where we identified the number of trees. And we needed to do that because we were needing to have a lot of observation to be sure that the model that we developed would be statistically significant. Using machine learning and artificial intelligence, we can tie together these thousands of observations with information about environmental characteristics. This gives us all the information we need to be able to extrapolate those relationships across the globe to generate a map of reforestation potential. So ultimately, it's a three-step process. First, we identify where trees might naturally exist in the protected areas. By characterizing those ecosystems, we then generate a global map of where trees could potentially exist in the absence of humans. And then, ultimately, we subtract away the areas that we cannot restore, like urban land and agricultural land, leaving us with a map of where could potentially be restored around the world. The area for extra tree restoration potential is far greater than we could have ever imagined. Over 1.6 billion hectares of land is available for restoration. And 0.9 billion hectares of that exists outside of urban and agricultural regions. So what is very interesting in our results is that uh, cont contrary to, to what is done habitually where you know that we put all the focus on tropical regions where you have a lot of forests and, and of course we found also that we can put a lot of trees back uh, in those regions. We actually found that most of the work of restoration can be done in the northern hemisphere. So it can be done in, in USA, in Canada, in Russia, in China, in Europe. Like if you focus on those countries, you can do more than a half of the work in terms of restoration. Our lab actively works with lots of restoration projects all over the world, trying to restore ecosystems. But if they don't have the right ecological knowledge, they can plant the wrong trees in the wrong soils. Making the right decisions requires that ecological understanding. So you need to understand in which climate condition, which combination of climate condition and also soil conditions, a tree can grow and sustain and survive. This global map is so essential for us to make more effective global scale restoration targets. But it's also critical to guide local scale restoration projects by revealing what the potential for tree capacity and carbon storage is in all regions around the world. Addressing climate change through natural restoration requires the engagement of millions of people around the world, restoring trees and managing ecosystems. But ultimately, these models reveal for the first time that we have a fantastic opportunity to manage and restore these ecosystems in the fight against climate change, and we can actually have a real global impact.